Yes, we're back with another rider, another story. Today we have the lovely lady. <laughs> My name is Vula. And um, she's a singer. I and am. And probably an actress and probably a dancer, but we're going to find out. But before we jump into that, don't forget to like, subscribe and follow, depending on whatever platform you're listening to us on. So how did you get into the music industry? My father is in the music industry, so I kind of was exposed and surrounded by music from when I was a baby and always knew that this is exactly what I wanted to do. And your father's from SA as well? My dad is from South Africa, my oh. mum is from Zimbabwe. Oh. Um, I'm a Zulu woman, I speak Zulu, Kasa and Debele as well as I English. Like <laughs> <laughs> it is the language with um, a couple of clicks. So your, your father, what kind of music was he doing? My dad plays guitar and bass guitar and he plays bakanga music, which okay. is kind of like, for anyone that's aware of South African music, that's our national sound, so to speak. Okay. Yeah, that and I guess maybe South African jazz. Oh. Were you born here? I was born in America, actually. Oh. Yeah, I was born in Baytown, Houston, Texas. So okay. I'm an American but citizen. You live here though. But I lived here. I've been here since I was five years old. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. oh. And I'm not five years old anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you learned about the music industry that you wish you knew when you had started? Oh, okay question. Well, obviously hindsight is a, a blessing, I guess. So I guess the way people maneuver within the music industry what people say and what they do are two different things. When I was younger, I was much more obviously naive because of lack of experience and just a bit more hungry. But I, over the years, I've really tried not to let my experiences turn me bitter because ultimately I've always wanted to sing. Singing is brings me the most joy and seeing people get joy out of what I do is just a priceless feeling really. Okay, that's yeah. good. So you sing? Mm -hmm, I do, I sing, and I'm a singer-songwriter and I've an arranger, so I work with a lot of orchestras and I've worked with a lot of pop acts. I've been in a publishing deal for like six years. I'm not in the deal anymore. I haven't been in a deal for a long time actually, but yeah, I write as well as work with other artists. I've been in a group, but I say I've been, I still am, never really went, but I've um, been in a group called Basement Jacks. People might have known my work doing stuff and backing vocals for other artists, including Adele, Sam Smith, okay. doing stuff with Dizzy Rascal. That's and at the true. moment, I do a lot of vocal arranging for massive projects like the Quincy Jones Orchestra Project and the Pete Tong mm -hmm. um, Ibiza Classics Orchestra Project as well, so, yeah. where we've just finished the winter tour. They're very well connected and well experienced. I am you indeed. Got, you got any tracks out yourself? Yes, I've got my own solo stuff, if people can. Google Vula, yeah. well, spelled V-U-L-A, yeah. which is really simple. I do have my solo stuff, as well as an independent project called Diva Geek, which it's actually been a while ago now that came out back in 2012, but still a lot of people talk about it, which bring, that brings me joy. I mean, it's like, wow, when I think about it, it's like 10 years old. <laughs> but yeah, I've got an EP coming out in the new year. I've got material. I've been working with loads of other different acts. Okay, so just to jump in there, mm -hmm. your well-versed woman, lady. So what we're going to say, we're going to give you an opportunity to give us a verse of one of your favourite tracks that you've made. Oh, wow. Now that's a hard thing to do. Come on. Floor because is yours. Because there's loads of songs. There's loads of What's it. the one that comes to your mind that you've written? That I've written? Well, okay, there's a song that I've got on, on my Diva Geek project called Money. <laughs> Come on, girl. Oh, my God. Talk about putting me on the spot. I just want to get to my destination. <laughs> I need to just go post office. They say it makes the world spin round and round. It doesn't grow on 
cheese sometimes makes a sound keeps popping up in my mind all night and day inside my head and i just cannot get away if i was rich i'd be in a better place all i can buy around me with the biggest place ten credit cards every time so dangerous spending on things that would make me feel fabulous cause all i think about all day dollar cash in every way spend it here spend it there i just want it dirty money give me that money Sexy money, give me that money. That's all y'all get. Okay, that's good. (laughs) Now, what were you thinking? What motivated you to write that song? I think it's pretty obvious, isn't it? (laughs) Tell tell me, because I'm always interested to hear what inspires you. Well, um, at the time, at the time, from my memory, a lot of what was happening around me, people were singing about being in love or being out of love or doing or telling people, giving instructions of what to do on the dance floor. So I was like, there's other things than going to a club getting crunked or arguing with people or falling in love with people. (laughs) Like life is, you know, is intricate at the best of times with so many different variables and people go through things and I wanted to write something that was relatable that everybody can relate to and I think everybody daydreams and everybody wishes they had money and if they had money what would they do with it and that was just my perspective on how I felt if I had money well I would do with it Mm -hmm. basically (laughs) if you were rich well, first if of all, you were 16 again, what would you say to your 16 year old self? Save your money. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> that's what I would that. actually I say. I'm like, I'm like, save your money. You know, the obvious things is obviously watch who your power with and ting because, you know, people say stuff and they do completely different mm-hmm. stuff. But I actually think. I know that I am appreciative now of the experiences that I went through because of the lesson that I had learned. And I think sometimes just to be told things, you never take heed until you actually go through it and you feel it and experience it yourself. So I'm not, I don't regret some of the things that I went through that are bad because I'm here to tell the tale and it's made, it's character building and made me who I am. But if I could tell my 16 year old self anything, it's definitely like, have a good time, you know, look after yourself, obviously safety first, but look after your money, so. Who's been the most impressionable artist that you've worked with? Quincy Jones, because of his reach, how he influenced me before he even knew of my existence. And the fact that I got to a point where I was able to meet him, talk to him, work with him. What That's, kind of guy was is he? He's, <laughs> he's cheeky. He's like a cheeky granddad. That's got so many stories to tell, but or as well like some wise nuggets mm. that he's, he kind of throws every now and then at people. Yeah, I just the fact that I had the opportunity to to meet with him, to sit down with him. How did you get that opportunity? Through work, through the people that I knew. Massive shout out to to Jules Buckley, if ever you get a chance to hear this. (laughs) But that, you know, the people who I work with work in really high established places. And, you know, I guess they feel, you know, that I'm worthy of my, my talent, my skill, what it could bring, what it brought to the project. I am forever grateful for that, for sure. What does the future hold for you? Um, I want to be able to do my own stuff more. It's taken me a while to be really confident in being able to to stand beside a project where I'm not writing for somebody else, but I'm writing for myself. So I would love to be able to, I think, I don't, you know, some people are like, have you left it too late? I have those kind of conversations with myself, but I, the only time it's too late is when you're dead. Mm. 
Why would the age matter? Age? Yeah, why would age matter? Age, age doesn't matter. No, when you say, have you left it too late? No, so, yes, like the opportunities that I, I had before, I know that I could have pushed myself. Wow. I know I could have pushed myself in creating music under my name, but fear and insecurities got in the way mentally because of experiences subconsciously being told that I wasn't good enough and and learning learning my way as a as a black woman maneuvering in this industry how are you subconsciously told you're not good enough it, it wasn't the thing of like subconsciously not being told i was physically being told that i wasn't good enough that i've be, i have been told that i wasn't pretty enough really i have been told that i'm not skinny enough i have been told that i'm Surely I'm, but I'm light enough to be the black person in the group. I have been told that I've got a great face for radio. I have been told all that kind of crap. And when you, you when you hear that, uh, you know, a certain amount of times, you get to a point when you're an impressionable young lady that you do get to, to believe it until you realise otherwise. How do you respond to those comments when they told you? Well, it affected me, obviously, back then. Now, I'm older and wiser because I I see the motive the motive behind why people would say those kind of things and because I would have thought who was it is it Macy Gray yes she was told was it Macy Gray or Jill Scott one of them was told about their size and uh, oh there's so many of us that have been told about our size and, and stuff. those kind of things that she's like well I'm actually here about my voice yeah, of course. And that kind of attitude. So it kind of tells you... I'd say what I'm saying is it sounds like it's a blessing, really, when someone tells you that. Because what they're saying is they're that kind of agent or manager who wants to sell you on your body, not on your performance. Of and course. not someone who has your vested interest at heart. Mm. But when you are 22 years old and being told that, mm. it's a different thing than when you're 32. Mm. It's a different thing when you're 42. Like, no one can tell me that now, and I'm going to take, I'm going to believe every word and take heed to that. I'm going to tell them to, yeah, where to, to, go. to go. Yeah, where to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, does your father mentor you? Has he mentored you through the industry? He has, yes, absolutely. He's been a massive influence in my career, in my decision making, especially at the beginning, and what I do and stuff like that. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a great relationship. He's still around to this day and still active and still plays. And we have a studio back in South Africa and, you know, he's, mm -hmm. he's a qualified engineer. That's why I was born in the States, because he, he went to the States to get his degree. I just wasn't planned. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, will you... If you have children, I don't know if you've got children. I don't have any kids. Would you want them to be in the music industry? I can't say yes and I can't say no. I know all of the flaws of this industry because of my experience. But then also, there's so many amazing things. Thank you for the impromptu interview. My name is Vula, V-U-L-A. Y'all can catch me on all socials, V-U-L-A-V-O-X. And yeah. You okay. can also, you can Google me, bitch. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for that. And we wish you well. Thank you, Simon. It's nice to meet you. We hope that episode enhanced your life. We post an interview every day as well as vlogging on our social media channel. Don't forget to subscribe to get our latest episode.